Shalom, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It's Akika David. I'm your host of Absolute Knowledge of Torah. You know, I was trying to decide what I wanted to talk about today. Um, and I've come up with the narrative of the New Testament. I want you to see that John on the island of Patmos had a different vision than that which was communicated to Ezekiel. Okay. First of all, there are some comparisons that need to be made. Number one, there are certain things that John said that Ezekiel, in his vision, has never said. And you say, well, you know, there are two different visions. There's two different times. And so, you know, you know, the book of Hebrews says that, you know, God in different ways in different times has spoke to us in different manners and different, different ways. So, you know, we can't expect for, you know, God to, you know, come up with the same vision, you know, because he's always changing, you know, he's he's always doing things because, you know, we know how people are and how he just got to keep, you know, change his plan because man is so screwed up. Please give me a break. Yah's not asking us to change anything. He's already said what he had to say. OK, number one, John says there's not going to be any water, no sea, none, no seas ever. Right. Well, what does Zechariah say? What does Yah say to Zechariah? Since since Yah's you know interested in changing everything, what did what did he tell Zechariah? He told Zechariah in chapter fourteen, verse eight through nine, and in the day it shall be what in that day what day and the day that we're talking about okay that living water shall flow from Jerusalem half to the eastern sea and half to the western sea, both in the summer and the winter. So you still see there's a sea. You still see there's a eastern sea and a western sea. This is elementary, okay? But I, you probably didn't know that Yahweh shall be king over all the earth, not Yeshua. And if he wanted to mention Yeshua right here, couldn't he have mentioned him? He didn't mention him. Did he mention any other person? No, he mentioned himself. Yahweh shall be king. Do you understand that? That Yahweh is going to be king, and Yahweh is one, and his name is one. What's the second witness? Isaiah 45 and 18. Thus saith Yahweh. Then he describes who, 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 who. One, two, three, four, five, six. He gives us six who's here. Who created the heavens? Yahweh. Who is Elohim? Yahweh. Who formed the earth and made it? Yahweh. Who established it? Yahweh. Who created it? Not Who did not create it in vain? Yahweh. Who formed it to be inhabited? Yahweh. And then he finishes off by saying, I am Yahweh, and there's no other. Did you hear anything about Yeshua? Did you hear anything at all? About anyone else? No. Why did he create the earth? Answer. So it could be inhabited with what? People, animals, insects, birds, fish, everything. That's why he created the earth. I've noticed on YouTube and, and Facebook, you got all these people putting out these videos. Talking about, yeah, yeah, we're almost out of here. You know, we're going to be out of here. And then, you know, we're going to go to heaven and then the earth is going to be destroyed. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not going to be destroyed. He created it to be inhabited. He didn't create it to destroy it. Okay, I almost called you something. Again, I got to watch my mouth because sometimes people don't like my videos because I get kind of, you know, I get kind of crazy because I'm, I get irritated. You know, I'm just like, man, you got to, how damn stupid do you have to be to try to change what he keeps saying? Okay, number two, John says that Yah, the one who spoke to him, not Yah, forgive me, the God of the New Testament says I'm the Alpha and Omega. The Most High has never declared himself as Alpha and Omega, which are Greek symbols for the beginning and the end. Oh, we, we just change it. You know, we just say that, you know, he's the al Aleph and the Tav. You know, that's who he is, the Aleph and the Tav. You know, the first uh, letter of the Hebrew language and the last letter. That's who he is, the Aleph and the Tav. No, his name is not the Aleph and the Tav. It's not. Let's find where Yah declares who he is and he makes a proclamation of who he is. It's right there in Exodus chapter 34, verse 5 through 7. Verse number 5 says this, And Yahweh descended into the cloud and stood with him there. And proclaimed the name of Yahweh. Proclaim the name of Yahweh. And Yahweh passed before him and proclaimed what? The name of Yahweh. Yohewahe. Yohewahe. Elohim. The powerful one. Did he say his name was Aleph Tav? Is there any Aleph in here? Is there any Tav in here? No. The Chetragrammaton, four letters. The Yod, the He, the Wad, the He. 
and it means the self-existing one. Not the self-existing two, not the self-existing three, the self-existing one. Okay, all right. Let's talk about his attributes. What does he say about himself? Let's see what he says. I'm merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth. Do you believe it? Or do you believe that he's so angry that he got to send his only begotten son into the world to die for those? Keeping mercy for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. This is proclaimed in Exodus after he took the children of Israel out from bondage. But he gives us a warning. By no means clearing the guilty. I'm not clearing the guilty. I'm going to visit the iniquity. And that word visiting there means pokad. And pokad means to give an account. I'm going to make the children of the fathers and the children of the children to the third and fourth generation have to be accountable. I have to give them a measurement. I have to give them an account of all their actions and the things that which they have done. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring them into the place where I can give them an accounting to let them know that the, uh, the avon, okay, or avon is called iniquity, meaning the twistedness. What does it mean to be twisted? Twisted in your thoughts, twisted in your ways. Twisted like instead of following what Yah says, like to work six days and rest on the Sabbath, they decided that we're going to work seven days. Okay, to be twisted in your mind, it says, Yah says that you should not eat certain foods, but you decide that, you know what, I'm going to twist that and I'm going to eat what I want to eat, no matter what he says. Okay, and then you teach your children to do the same, to have no regard and disregard for the Holy One of Israel. Listen, people, there's a cost for following the Most High. There's a cost, there's a requirement. You can't expect to be holy just by mere name alone. It takes actions, and that's what our people don't want to do. They don't want to do what he says, period. That's why they need John's vision. John says that the, there won't be a temple. He says there won't be a temple. There's not going to be a temple in, in uh, the city of Jerusalem. Did, did you know that? Well, where, where, where does that say that? It's in Revelation chapter, verse, uh, chapter 21, verse 22. I'll read it. But I saw no temple. It's right there. He said, for there was no need of the sun. He says, the, the Almighty and the Lamb are His temple. Ezekiel didn't say that. Yah didn't say that. Yah says in chapter number 43 of Ezekiel, that Son of Man described the temple to the house of Israel. Describe it. Scroll on down to, to verse number 11. Give them the designs of the temple. Tell them the entire design. Show them all the forms and ordinances. Show them the, the, the Torah of it. Write it down. Show it to them. This is the law of the temple and the whole area surrounding the mountaintop. This is the law of the temple. So you got John saying that there's no temple. But then you have Ezekiel telling, God telling Ezekiel to tell the children of Israel that there is a temple. Right? Right? In the book of Ezekiel chapter number 37... He says, they'll know that I am their Elohim when I have my sanctuary among them. So who's telling the truth here? That's the question. That's all I wanted to ask. That's all I wanted to ask. You can look it up on Google. You can find out if there's a temple. Ezekiel had a vision. It has um, rooms for the, temp, uh, for the priests. It has rooms for singers. It has rooms for you to slaughter your offerings. Um, in a book of Ezekiel chapter 45 through 48, it talks about the sin offerings, the burn offerings, and all the different offerings. So if there's no sin, then why is there offerings? If there's no death, then why does he mention in Isaiah chapter number 65 that if a child dies, if, if a child, when a child dies at 100, it'd be like, you know, a person who dies as 100 is like a, di a child dying. Why does he say that? Why are we having a discussion about this? What's, what's, the, what's the deal? I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. I'm trying to understand. Why can't we just believe what he's saying? Why? Okay? Last point. John says that the city is going to be 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles. That, like a cube. Okay? That's what he says. Well, guess what Yah says? Yah says the whole entire perimeter of the city is going to be six miles. In chapter number 48, verse 35. Chapter 48 of Ezekiel, verse 35. 
six miles. And he actually names the city and says, Yahweh Shema. He doesn't even call it Yerushalayim anymore. What's the problem? Somebody is lying. That's all I just want to tell you. Somebody's lying. I don't have to give you a 45-minute video. All you got to do is read it for yourself. And you'll see that somebody's not telling the truth. Are you going to believe what John says? Or are you going to believe what Yah says? That's what this video is about. Well, until next time, I say to you, Shalom.